Okay, back to our uh, discussion here. So when we talk about uh, JavaFX as being an RIA technology, that term may be foreign to some of you. What is RIA all about? Well, RIA, RIA is a term uh, that stands for Rich Internet. Whoops, a Rich Internet, Rich Internet Application. RIAs are web-based applications, at least traditionally. And the idea behind RIA really is in line with uh, what many people have heard about with regard to Web 2.0, trying to get web applications to function as more traditional desktop applications, offering a uh, fancy drag and drop and all sorts of fancy widgets to be able to run web-based applications as if it was really just a desktop application. Typically, these types of applications are delivered via the Internet to our browsers, and they often require additional software to be plugged into the browser, things like ActiveX, even Java or Flash. So what JavaFX is is now maybe a little bit more clear, but what is JavaFX not? There have been a lot of rumors about uh, what JavaFX is, in particular in relation to a lot of the Java stack that already exists. Uh, sometimes there's been some rumors about the fact that Java is a swing, or I should say JavaFX, is a swing replacement. In fact, swing is a very large and extensible graphical user interface component mechanism for building our desktop applications. JavaFX can be used with swing, but it certainly is not necessarily a replacement for swing. If you're trying to build the world's best desktop application, swing is probably still the API for you. If you're trying to build an application that, again, operates across all the screens of your life, then JavaFX might be the ticket. There's also been rumor for the fact that uh, uh, JavaFX is a replacement for Java ME technology, Java Micro Edition technology. In fact, Java ME technology provides a whole host of APIs for running all sorts of applications, all the way from the front end, the graphical user interface, to the back end, so it's for complete mobile application development. JavaFX, again, is just concentrating on the UI capability. So JavaFX might be used in combination with Java ME to build the front end to a Java ME application, but it shouldn't be thought of necessarily as being a complete mobile application development environment. Lastly, we've heard uh, rumors of the fact that uh, uh, JavaFX is just a way to add animation to a Java website. Well, as you just saw with one of the uh, simple applications that I showed you, Certainly, it is a means to add animation to a Java website or to a Java application that runs through a browser, but it can do a lot, lot more. Again, there to provide a mechanism for building all those graphical user interfaces across all the various devices that we run. There are plenty of competitors to JavaFX. JavaFX is out there in reaction to a lot of the other RIA technologies that exist in the marketplace. Certainly, uh, there is... Ajax, and many of you have probably heard of the asynchronous JavaScript plus cascading style sheet, XHTML, and DOM technology that has really brought about the whole Web 2.0 as we know it today. A nice technology, but as many of you who have used uh, Ajax might have found, there can be some issues. First of all, many of these technologies are certainly um, showing a little bit of their age. They were put together to be able to bring us Web 2.0 in the early stages, uh, but there have been some issues with regard to Ajax, especially in getting it to work across all the various browsers that are out there and getting them to operate in a browser in a consistent fashion. Uh, Adobe has been a large partner in trying to develop all sorts of Web 2.0 technologies. In particular, they've been focusing lately on Flex in combination with this OB, Adobe um, Integrated Runtime, or AIR, collection of products to help build RIA technologies. Microsoft Silverlight is another competitor, again, used in the development of RIA, RIA technologies, in particular for .NET platforms. And there are plenty of other types of technologies out there in this land of Web 2.0 slash RIA environment. So how does uh, JavaFX stack up to these particular competitors? Well, it is out there, again, to provide that RIA platform, but again, an RIA for all platforms, not just the web. It's out there for desktops, browsers, as well as mobile devices. So it truly is a Wara type of user interface development tool. And of course, JavaFX also leverages the existing Java stack. In other words, it runs on the Java Virtual Machine, which is already very available on most browsers and preeminently available on almost all mobile devices out there. JavaFX Script can call Java classes and vice versa. Java classes can call JavaFX Script. 
So it is a mechanism for building all the user interfaces of our life, taking advantage of the existing Java stack that we have available to us. And it's also meant to be a pretty simple and easy language to learn. We'll let you be the judge of that after you take a look at today's presentation and some of the syntax and API that we'll look at a little bit later on. So let's take a look at some basics. How do you build a simple JavaFX application? How do you code it, compile, and run that application? Well, first off, what do you need to build a JavaFX application? You're going to need the JavaFX SDK. Latest version is 1.1. That was just released back in February of this year. It provides a means for us to build, compile, and run our JavaFX applications from a command prompt type of environment. What you will also need along with JavaFX SDK is a Java platform, so the Java SDK. At least version 6 if you're working on Windows and SDK 5 if you're working in the Mac OS environment. At this point, those are the two environments for which JavaFX is supported via Sun. A Linux version is also supported by one of the open source development groups out there. If you go out to the JavaFX SDK website, you'll also see some links out there to pull down that open source project. There are going to be other platforms that will be supported in the future, at least per the JavaFX website. In addition to the JavaFX SDK, what do you need? Well, you're probably going to want a JavaFX Aware IDE. Today there are two, NetBeans and Eclipse 3.4 with a JavaFX plugin. In the future, many other IDEs are anticipated to be offered. In fact, many of the commercial products that are available out there are looking at providing JavaFX as soon as possible. Optionally, you may also choose to download and use the JavaFX production suite. This is a set of tools for uh, graphical designers in particular, creating all sorts of visual uh, assets, uh, diagrams, pictures, things of that nature to be used in our JavaFX apps. In fact, it also provides a mechanism to uh, integrate and work and export uh, things like graphics from products such as Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Photoshop. Lastly, if you're working in the Java ME circle, you may also want to get the Java ME SDK, the latest and greatest, which is 3.0. This is a tool that came out here relatively recent, and it offers support for JavaFX mobile emulation. It doesn't offer the development capability. In other words, it's not there to develop JavaFX applications, but it does provide support in actually testing and running JavaFX applications from a mobile emulator. So, with your tool set set up and ready to go with JavaFX, how do we actually start developing JavaFX applications? Well, let's take a look at uh, kind of the hello world of JavaFX applications. We'll take a little application here shown on the screen, um, which I call Cool Running. And what does Cool Running do? Well, it produces a little window, as you see here, on the right-hand side. Now, we'll talk a little bit later on here about this uh, API and about this syntax for building an application in JavaFX. So don't want you to concentrate too much yet on the left-hand side in the code there. Just recognize we need to take this particular set of code to produce the results of the window you see there on the right. How do we do that? Well, we take this code and we save it in a file, a file with a .fx suffix. Uh, the name of the file doesn't really matter. In other words, unlike Java, where uh, everything has to be in a class and every class has to be named uh, per the actual name of the class that it holds, the files in JavaFX don't require, at least in most cases, we'll talk about some exceptions to that, uh, in most cases, the file name isn't uh, relevant to the actual code it might hold. So for example's sake, I've taken the code we just saw and saved that in a test.fx file in a CJFX folder. 